few of the outstanding players is their quarterback, Brian Sheriffs. He's completing 70% of his passes, and he's also the leading rusher on their football team. His go-to guy is Noel Thomas, wide receiver, 26 catches. On the defense, uh, they have some outstanding pay players. They have a defensive tackle, Foley Fatuski, who has uh, 38 starts, which is an amazing number. They have cornerback uh, Javon Williams, redshirt senior, who has 30 starts. A free safety, that's an NFL prospect, uh, number 20, Obi. And then they have a cornerback, Jamal Summers, uh, with 10 career picks on the defensive side as well. So uh, very, very experienced football team on defense, uh, some outstanding players on offense, two and one record uh, with their only loss being to Navy on obviously a very controversial play at the end where they had an opportunity to beat 3-0. Mike? Questions for Coach? Please raise your hand. Nico? Coach, good to see you. Hey, Nico. Uh, first road game for you guys. Does the, the preparation, what you're telling the guys at this point in the week, the lead up to it, does that change at all with the road game? Uh, just, just some of the uh, pep talks during week change a little bit, but basically the, uh, the inner skeleton, how we handle the practice and all that stuff is basically the same. You got to speak up. You just mumble it out there. I can't what hear, are the man. Stats of Kyle and Jason Emmerich? Oh, we haven't heard all, all the injured guys. We haven't heard back from them yet. They still have a, they have a preliminary. After the game, they have a deal they have to go through, and then they have a training room uh, on Sunday, and then the doctors get to see them again, you know, today or sometime later today. So we won't know until later on in the week. One of the things you've kind of talked about as you install new systems is these kids, they played last year, the last two years with a different system, so you have habits from those things. I'm kind of curious, when you watch uh, the defense in particular, you go back and watch film, are, what minor things do you see, maybe habits or small techniques or things that are still kind of, you know, you're working out uh, from what the former staff kind of put in? You know, it's, uh, I don't want to put anything back on them, but it just has to do with habits. There's there's obviously, when you look at the games, there's stretches where guys are doing it exactly right, and then all of a sudden they have a flashback. And then you, you know, you're sitting there going, hey, you just did it right three times in a row. Why did you do it wrong the fourth time? And it's like, oh, coach, I don't know. Well, that I don't know is that they've been, they're used to doing it a certain way, and we've got to get them out of the old way and get them into the new way. And that's across the board at a lot of positions. I think that answered your question. Yeah, just to, to kind of follow up, the old scheme, just the way it was based, was very aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. So we see, a guy will go for a big hit, at least in the past, rather than make a form tackle. Uh, just your kind of ball disruption was kind of key. And, and I know in every defense you want some of that, but are those kind of the plays you see? Uh, is that something that you notice that aggression is maybe you want a little bit less of that? You don't ever want to say that on a football field. You want your team to be physical. You want them to be aggressive. I think there's just there's more concepts, okay, that you can be as aggressive as you want to be, but you need to be aggressive on this shoulder knowing that help is coming from another shoulder. And if you want to, you know, that's your time to be aggressive. You can't take the guy on the opposite shoulder and then cut off the rest of the defense, so to speak, on a tackle and then give this, op this guy an opportunity to go down the sidelines. It's no different on defense as it is on offense. The same thing on offense. There's certain things that might have been allowed in the old system that's not allowed in this system. So it's just, just a matter of repetitions and uh, guys getting used to doing what they're doing. Uh, you said after the game Saturday that you know, we're not there yet. There won't be a day when we get there if we have today. Remember. So we're a quarter of the way through the season. So can you tell us where we are and how far away are we? We're in the beginning. We're in the beginning stages because of where we started from. I said that uh, out of all the places I've been, this is going to be the toughest transition I've ever had because of what was taught previously before we got here. It does not mean that what they were teaching was wrong. It just means that that was the Z, and we're operating from the A side of the alphabet. It's a huge transition. So uh, as we grow together, we'll get better and better at it. Chris and then Nate. Uh, you know, we saw, uh, you know, Bristol Steam had some really explosive moments in the return games uh, last year. Uh, you opted to go with Sean Riley uh, against South Florida. What was the thinking behind the change? I think the main thing is just to look at the type of how many plays Briz is going to play and look at what we do offensively compared to what he used to do in the, in the old offense. He, it was um, 
he wasn't getting as many opportunities in the old offense so he could have a lot more energy into those special teams. And then based off of what we're doing in our offense, he's, he's, getting, he's getting a lot more work. So we just wanted to make sure we had somebody fresher for those opportunities back there in the kick game. Uh, Irv Phillips, this is his first year really as a full-time receiver. In the last eight, nine months since you inherited him, in what particular areas has he, has he made his biggest strides in? I think like uh, Amba, the, uh, the biggest thing that Irv's doing is he's really trying to digest what we're doing. He has a long way to go, and he, uh, he's doing a fabulous job, obviously based off of some statistics that's going on right now. But he's just really understanding the fundamentals, understanding what we're trying to get him to do, and he has a good concept for the offense. Uh, I can't remember who asked the question over here, whether it was you or not, Stephen. Now, when it comes to Briz, Briz is still going to be able to return kicks for us. It's not us. It's just that we're going to decide when he goes back there. You know what I mean? OK. Mark, and then in the back. Coach, I want to go back to the, uh, the play where Eric Dungeon was still out for the pass. And, and the week before, he, he did a hurdle. He said he wasn't happy after that. Um, but then going out for pass and, and took a big hit there. So I just wondered if you said after the game that you would call that play again. How, how concerned are you given his, his history? Well, I just got through reading an article and someone called me a knucklehead because they had five guys deep back there and how could he get open. Actually, they had two people deep. It was wide open. And the ball hit his hand. He could have caught the ball and not taken a shot at all. The ball was in the air a little bit longer than it has been in practice. If the air would have been taken out of the ball and it had been a little bit more of a line, he'd have caught the ball. Based off of his running skills and speed, he probably would have scored, and we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. He is a very aggressive player. You can't take that out of his nature. But if he's going to be wants to do things like that, we're going to dictate when we're going to take a chance with him. We don't want him running out and jumping and hurling players and falling on his back and shoulders on the six-yard line. Okay. Coach. Uh, you're always busy prepping for games and game day. You're busy with things, but you had a chance to meet Jim Brown, and he had some wonderful things to say about you as a coach, as a person. Someone with that kind of gravitas, what, what does it mean to you to, to get kind of his seal of approval? You know, my father, uh, my father passed away in, uh, in, 1994, he was 57 years old. He's buried in the National Cemetery in Houston next to his brother. And when I was growing up, I used to get posters of football players and put them on my wall. And he'd rip them down, Abs actually rip them off the wall and put them in the trash. And he says, if you want to put a poster up, you put Jim Brown up. And I'm like, Jim Brown? So then I started doing research on Jim Brown. And uh, to me, I, he's the greatest player that's ever played. And some of his numbers, I'll give you an example. He, he, uh, he averaged 100 yards a game for his entire NFL career. I want to get these stats right. He averaged 5.2 yards per carry in the National Football League. And stay with me for a second. This is a fabulous question. And he never laid down on the football field. He never got hurt. He never laid down on the football field. In, in 31 years of coaching, what we've told our running backs are this. If you average, you guys, you guys are going to take this and turn it into an article, but just think about this. If you average 4.0 yards per carry, you will always play in the game. Okay, Nate, if you could average 4.0, you would play in the game for Syracuse University. Average per carry. If you average 4.5 yards per carry, you're probably always going to be the starter. I've never had a guy that's averaged 4.5 yards per carry or better and hasn't been the starting tailback on the team. Jim Brown averaged 5.2 yards per carry in the National Football League. I have no idea what he averaged in college. He never missed a game with injury. He never laid down on the football field. When you're talking about being consistently good, okay, and great at the same time, it's unmatched. So when you talk about the physicality of the game, the mental aspects of the game, the leadership of the game, and then always being there for your brethren, regardless of how you feel, regardless of the pain. I mean, there's so much, if you, 
if you really understand what this game's all about, there's just so much respect there. It's, it's, you know, I don't even have a word for it. I mean, he's, he's the best of the best. And that's not, I want to say something. That's not a Syracuse thing because I'm sitting here and, and I got an S on my chest. I would say that at any university anywhere in the country. That's how good he is. Time for a couple more questions. John? Uh, Jordan Frederick was talking about the duty that start. Just in what situations do you like to have him on the field? Is it you know, blocking or something like that? You know, Jordan's actually been doing better and better. And I thought he did some nice things at the end of the game. Those things are always up to evaluation. It just depends on what we're doing and what we're trying to do. I don't look at him as not being in our two deep. I look at him as somebody that we can put into a football game. He has knowledge of the offense, and he has the ability to help us win games. Last question for Chad. Coach, you've had a couple tough losses. How do you keep yourself uh, up in spirit, and how do you uh, keep your players up in spirit? I have not been up in spirit. I've been down a little bit. I really have. But. Um, uh, when I, was, when I was speaking to the guys on, uh, on Sunday and I was just looking at them, they have, the, the tough thing when you make a transition like this is they have no idea how close they are. All they do is, hey, we're one and two, uh, yada, 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 yada. When are we going to get a win? They look at themselves uh, not in a good light. But uh, you look at the, uh, the fast start that Louisville had on us, and then they battled back in the game and then the game got away from us. And then everybody's like, well, what kind of team do you have that Louisville can do that to you? And then you turn around and you saw what Louisville did to Florida State. And you go, oh, well, maybe they're not as bad as they think they are. Then you have Florida State come in here and we go up 17 zip. Okay? And then we turn around and we lose that game. We don't score in the second half. I'm like, what in the heck's going on? We're, I don't think we're as bad as the Louisville game. Okay? I don't, I see us as, as good as that first quarter in South Florida, but we've got to find a way to be consistently good and not occasionally great. We've got to find a way to carry that all the way through. They're slowly missing. They're, they're, that engine is off. It's just slightly off. And uh, the cool thing about the things we do on offense and the things we do on defense is once they get it, it won't change. It will not change. Once they get it, they'll have it forever. And that's when it gets to be really fun around here. Okay. Thank you.